Welcome back to Nick Lenz's Comic Corner, classic slash non-classic. This is episode number 795 and double show number 689. I got two trades featuring Carol Danvers, a.k.a. Captain Marvel. First one is from her time as Miss Marvel. Well, from the second volume of her series as Miss Marvel. We have Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, the Miss Marvel years, volume two, collecting issues of... 1834, Volume 2, and the Annual, written by Brian Reed. Artwork by uh, various different artists on here. Uh, Mark Robinson does the Annual. Uh, Aaron Letsby does issues 18, 19, and 21, 24. Uh, Greg Tosati does issue 20. 25, 26, and 28, the 30 is done by Andrea Malio. 27 is done by Andrea Calillo. Irene Melina does the other one. Marcos Mar Mar Mars does issues 31. And the final three issues is done by Pablo Sacria, who does 32 and 34. Uh, 34 is also co done by Andrina Molino. Yeah, this is a, like, like with the first volume, this is a combination of three trades. Yep. This one's basically, I think, like Monster Island. Let's see if I can find it here. Yeah, I know one is actually uh, one is Ascension, the other one is Secret Invasion. Yeah, another Secret Invasion tie I'm about to get done here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Also, uh, after the first arc in here, yeah, for some reason, uh, Arena is dropped from the series. Yeah, Arena has been supporting character. Yeah, th this trade basically is a comment is basically taking the trades of Monster Smash, Secret Invasion, and Ascension. Though for some reason it include the Miss Marvel storyteller one shot. Yeah, I'm a little surprised they didn't throw that in here, but yeah, they threw in the annual. Probably it's gonna be the next trade. Uh huh. Yeah, it probably is. Uh, the Secret Invasion one. Well, it's mostly her fighting a bunch of scrolls in New York. And simply put what she was up to during the events of the main story. Yeah, this is by far one of a handful of tie-ins I've actually done, for review-wise, for my YouTube channel. I've also reviewed of the main event, the Secret of Asian X-Men miniseries, the miniseries for Amazing Spider-Man, and the Mighty Avengers tie-in. Like I gotta say, I love the Miss Marvel tie-in, though it felt like, though, this felt like we were really long. This was like, I felt like, it felt like it was like, when I was reading this, it felt like it was taking like 12 issues, even though it was actually 6. Mm-hmm. Monster Hunt. She ends up on Monster Island. Yep. And she is also gets a chance to fight the Puppet Master who claims he retired. The uh, the Ascension arc is simply uh, her backstory of what she was doing before she got her powers, where she was a secret agent. And at one point, because she was captured and tortured, yeah, they have her basically stripped out of her flight uniform and put her, basically, she's basically tortured in her underwear. Thank you, God. But you gotta thank the writer and the artist for not having her torture her butt naked. That would have been appropriate, especially since this is a teen rated book. I guess stripping her underwear is probably a little more appropriate than stripping her butt naked. Yeah, but this is Carol Danvers. Not the first time. This is probably like the first she's ever been sort of almost violated. Though she kind of been violated before. Back in the 80s, in a story where everybody involved in it pretty much regretted doing it. What am I talking about? Avengers 200, where she basically, uh, during the course of several issues, apparent where she was kidnapped by a mortalist, where she was kidnapped by him, brainwashed her, and raped her. And she got pregnant with him, which was really weird. Yeah, it's one of, my, one of the most stupidest stories that, that Marvel came up with, and... Jim Shooter himself, I've actually heard he's actually apologized for the story, but yeah. But one thing I gotta pray, she wasn't sexually assaulted. Thank you, God, she wasn't. That. She's basically just beating the crap out of. She apparently, uh, they broke her arm. They broke the, she, broke, she broke, broke her leg at landing. They also broke her arm, got a few broken ribs. She eventually made it back home perfectly fine, but she wasn't clear for flight duty. She really wanted to fly. And so she became a secret, and she's like, uh, can I still fly? And like, sure, why not? And of course, some of the stuff involving the CIA, but it's it's a great thing. And of course, she also gets chance. Oh, of course, she also gets chance to visit her family, which is something she also does in the current miniseries, The Life of Captain Marvel. Yep, this by far is really good. 
I do recommend this if people are fans of Carol Danvers. I do recommend this. Now, as far as I can tell, this probably going to be one more trade for left for this to come up because, well, this fine only, this fine only lasted 50 issues. So, it makes sense that Volume 3 would be the last one. Yep. I'm going to get this book a 9.75 out of 10 because I love these issues. They're really damn good. I love this period of time uh, from the period of like 2004 to about, I'd say, about 2012. It's a good period of time for reading these comic books. Because there was a lot of really good comic books come with this period of time. I mean, yes, uh, Marvel now basically did kind of change things, but there was still a lot of good storytelling even afterwards. But I consider this is my opinion uh, from the period of like 2004 to about 2012. This is just me. Uh, during the first uh, nine years of reading comic books, a lot of really good stuff came out this period of time. And I love this period of time. That's why I love reviewing trades that came out this period of time. The stories that came out this period of time. All right. Next up is another trade that features Carol Danvers. The Mighty Captain Marvel. Volume 3. Dark Origin. Which is simply put, set up for Infinity Wars. Yeah. That's all this story is. It's set up for. Yeah. It's one of two they did it for. It. The other, of course, was, was Guardians of the Galaxy. When it was with Triple Dutch numbering. This is basically Captain Marvel. This is, of course, the Carol Danvers numbering. 125 to 129. The writing here is done by Margaret Chuhall, who actually is currently doing the Life Captain Marvel miniseries. Though I do think that she's going to have an ongoing. A lot of people can't believe that. So do I. The artwork here is done by Michelle Benin. The cover art here is done by Phil Noto. Yep. The story of this is like right after the events of Secret Empire. And... Alpha Flight is basically grounded until they get a new space station up. T'Challa makes a brief appearance at the beginning. So they try to figure out a way to get back to space. And she gets contacted by Bean, who is a character from the Kelsu Suhanic run. A little surprised she actually showed up here. And Oh yeah, and also the stuff that happened prior to Secret Invasion. Never brought up in here. The whole thing with the whole uh, refugee camp. Never brought up in here at all. It's really weird. That the writer simply just forgot about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I should also point out that this trade is really thin. Yeah. For some for a series called Mighty Captain Marvel. Though it's they it's the Mighty Coach called kind of Captain Marvel. So Mar Margaret Shuho only wrote like like nine plus I think this is uh five. She only wrote like a good fourteen issues, so not much. Though they might include the Life Captain Marvel mini series as my part of it. Yeah, so she gets sent to another universe where off of flight it's called Zeta Flight. And the Guardians will show up in here as well. And they look completely different. Okay, Star-Lord looks pretty much the same, except, he's, except he calls himself Star-Killer. Uh, Gamora is pink instead of being green. Groot is known as Root, and he's a talking carrot. Rocket Raccoon is not a raccoon. It's a human one with raccoon eyes. Uh, Drax is, like, really thin. Like, wow. If you see him in here, he's like... He's like much more thin than he's no way to pick to be. Uh, Black Widow shows up in here, surprisingly, and, and it also making the fact, hey, uh, I just wa I, I saw Steve Rogers kill you. I'm still questioning how in the world Steve Rogers could kill him by, by smacking the face with a shield. I've seen other characters smack a face with a shield, and yet their next in snap. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah. Oh yeah, and this is what Star lo looks like in this universe. Not much different than he does in the regular universe, except for this one. He actually managed to keep the top part of his helmet. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yep. Let's see if I can find here the the rest of the Guardians. Also, there's a start of this really funny moment where Chewie, it, of course, uh, Carol was crashing at J Jessica Drew's place, and she's sleeping in um. Uh, Gary Drew, who is uh, Jessica Drew's son, sleeping in his bedroom, and her cat is basically kind of wrapped around her head. It's so cute. And here are the Guardians. This is them. Yeah, that is supposed to be. Yeah, that talking character that's supposed to be Groot. Call himself Root, and he says, "I am Root." Yeah, Gamora looks pretty much the same. Doesn't act much different except that she's pink. Drax is like thin, but that's different. Uh, rocket is completely different. He, one thing, it's hu It's a human-looking uh, rocket. No mentioning of, and also implying that she and uh, Starlight may have had a thing for each other, but it's never developed upon. Oh yeah, and also she reveal uh, this. Uh, Peter Quill reveals that she's basically he's basically her nemesis. 
he laughs. She laughs at like <laughs> Peter Quill, my nemesis. <laughs> I actually believe that. That is so funny. Yeah. Plus, we also have this universe version of Thanos, who looks exactly the same. He doesn't act much different. It's like it's like the regular universe Thanos. Yeah, and the whole point of this storyline is that Carol Danvers gets her hands on the Reality Stone. And simply put, this is enough for Infinity, well, Infinity Countdown, of course, related to Infinity Wars. Yeah. Of course, she gets back to the universe. Alpha Fly is back up and running. Bean is basically back normal. But the ending of this, simply put, kind of leads into Infinity Wars. I was sad to see this just, just end again. I mean, the last this ended was back, yeah, I think it was like 20, uh, just a few years ago. But this was fantastic. I love it. I love the covers that Phil Noto does for this series. Makes perfect sense. He did all the, pretty much all the covers for Paul Dameron. I think he's doing the last issue. Yeah, I don't think he's just going to cover, but it's great, though, that he got a chance to do another book besides uh, Paul Dameron doing the cover art for because Phil Noto is a fantastic artist. Never met the guy, but I've heard he's a great person to meet, but I've never met him. I met Casey Jones, a friend of his, but I've never actually met uh, Phil Noto. I, I would love to get a chance to meet him. This by far was really good. Uh, great little story, but all it was was simply put a setup story for Infinity Wars. Not a bad idea to do, but yeah. I'm going to give this book a 9.5 out of 10. It's really good. Um, as far as I know, aside from Life Captain Marvel, they are going to, as far as I know, Marvel's probably gonna, still going to give her an ongoing series. But my guess is they're probably going to uh, wait until after the Life Cat of the Mark comes out. They're probably that's probably when they're going to release another ongoing. But I'm also, I'm glad the fact that the writers of that series, the writer of the series, is the same way they wrote this, because it's quite stupid that they, that some books can keep changing writers for some strange reason. Now, when uh, Cat of the Marvel was relaunched a few years ago, you have Christos and Ruth Gage. Yeah, the husband wife couple. Of course, Christos Gage also was doing the Rom. Uh, comic book published from IDW, but it was great the fact I had a chance to write this character. And, yeah, it seems like like half the writers who write Captain Marvel are, in fact, women. I would say probably the first female writer of Carol was probably Kelly Sue Honnick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was her first. You gotta count Ruth Gage is probably the second one. And Margaret Scholl is the third female writer because half the people who written Carol Danvers have been guys. Yep. Well, at least she's had more than one female writer. Unlike some characters who's had only one. I mean, Aquaman is getting uh, Kelly Sue Honnick, who was the first woman to write Aquaman. Batman isn't written by a woman. Well, in our books, she's written by a woman, but not to the comics of Batman. Yep. Yeah, so that's really it for this episode. Uh, stay tuned for next episode, episode number 796. And double shot number 690. Where I'm going to do two X-Men trades, okay? I'll see you next review. Bye.